Two or three hundred years ago, when people were far from being so crafty and cunning as they are nowadays, an extraordinary event took place in a little town. By some mischance, one of the great owls called Horned Owls had come from the neighbouring woods into the barn of one of the townsfolk in the night time, and when day broke, did not dare to venture forth again from her retreat for fear of the other birds, which raised a terrible outcry whenever she appeared. In the morning, when the manservant went into the barn to fetch some straw, he was so mightily alarmed at the sight of the owl sitting there in, the, in a corner that he ran away and announced to his master, that a monster, the like of which he had never set eyes on in his life, and which could devour a man without the slightest difficulty, was sitting in the barn, rolling his eyes about in his head. I know you already, said the master, you have courage enough to chase a blackbird without, about the fields, but when you see a dead hen lying, you have to get a you have to get a stick before you go near it. I must go and see for myself what kind of a monster it is, added the master. I must go and see for myself what kind of granary. And looked. No. No, added the master, and he went quite boldly into the granary and looked around him, or oh, granary, whatever. When, however, he saw the strange, grim creature with his own eyes, he was no less terrified than the servant had been. With two bounds he sprang out, ran to his neighbours, and begged them imploringly to lend him assistance against an unknown and dangerous beast or else the whole town might be in danger if it were to break loose out of the barn where it was shut up. A great noise and clamour arose in all the streets. The townsmen came armed with spears, hayforks, scythes and axes, as if they were going out against an enemy. Finally the senators appeared, with the burgomaster at their head. When they had drawn up in the, in the marketplace, they marched to the barn and surrounded it on all sides. Thereupon, one of the most courageous of them stepped forth and entered with his spear lowered, but came running out immediately afterwards with a shriek as, a pale, as, as pale as death and could not utter a single word. Yet two others ventured in, but they fared no better. At last one stepped forth, a great strong man who was famous for his warlike deeds, and said, You will not drive away the monster by merely looking at him. We must in earnest here. No, we must be earnest here. But I see that you have all turned into women, and not one of you dares to encounter the animal. He ordered them to give him some armour, and had a sword and spear brought, and armed himself. All praised his courage, though many feared for his life. The two barn doors were opened, and they saw the owl which in the meantime had perched herself on the middle of a great crossbeam. He had a ladder brought, and when he raised it and made ready to climb, they all cried out to him that he was to bear himself bravely, and commended him to St. George, who slew, a, who slew the dragon. When he had just got to the top, the owl perceived that he had designs on her, and was also bewildered by the crowd and the shouting, and knew not how to escape. She rolled her eyes, ruffled her feathers, 
flapped her wings, snapped her beak and cried, To wit, to woo! In a harsh voice, Strike home, strike home! screamed the crowd outside to the valiant hero. Anyone who was standing where I am standing, answered he, would not cry strike home. He certainly did plant his foot one rung higher on the ladder. And then he began to tremble, and half fainting, he went back again. And now there was no one left who dared to put himself in such danger. The monster, said they, has poisoned and mortally wounded the very strongest man among us by snapping at him and breathing on uh, and just breathing on him. Are we too to risk our lives? They took counsel as to what they ought to do to prevent the whole town being destroyed. For a long time everything seemed to be of no use, but at length the burgomaster found an expedient sorry, an expedient. My opinion, said he, is that we ought out of the common purse to pay for this barn, and whosoever and whatsoever corn, straw or hay it contains and thus indemnify the owner, and then burn down the whole building and the terrible beast with it. Thus no one will have to endanger his life. This is no time for thinking of expense. And Nagardilus would be ill applied. All agreed with him. So they set fire to the barn at all four corners, and with it the owl was miserably burnt. Let anyone who will not believe it go hither and inquire for himself. And that was the owl. Next time, the moon. Until then, bye bye.